But I say, I say, it's a very wonderful to run as a mission with your host, very wonderful. Another great episode coming. I mean, I say great. Uh, <laughs> people, uh, I hope you listening are having a good time doing this with me. Um, I am enjoying recording these uh, audio transmissions. Uh, last time I talked about watercolor, how it's my favorite medium. I left a little bit of room to talk about wash. I'm not gonna dwell much on wash this transmission because, you know, I don't want it to be uh, just me talking about materials used for drawing. I want to mix it up a little bit. But um, gouache is sometimes referred to as opaque watercolor. I cannot go on enough about how I hate that description. That is like saying uh, bread with cheese and oregano and, and, and salami is a pizza. It's not. It has the same ingredients, the same calories, but bread with cheese and toppings is not pizza. So wash like watercolor, it has the same type of pigments and the medium, which is gum arabic or dextrin or honey or animal fat, depending on the on the brand, on the type of watercolor and gouache. But it's better to think of gouache as its own thing. And so you have the professional gouache and you have poster color, which sometimes is called designer gouache and many other different types. The difference of quality is a little bit of the medium. Some use more high-end expensive gum arabic and others use dextrin. The difference that is one is made from a rare tree and the other is made of corn, I think. So two different types of quality glue. But the main quality that people pay attention to is the pigment. Because a professional wash is good for art. If you're going to have your work on a gallery being exposed, you need good pigments. Because every single pigment, every single painting will fade one day. They all fade with time. And I talked about how Van Gogh, Van Gogh um, room painting nowadays is blue, but used to be purple. Because the purple paint or pink that he must have used, primary red, faded with time. Because primary reds and magentas and pinks and violets and purples they are the most expensive and they are the most prone to fading. So if you want to expose on a gallery, you're going to need a resistant pigment. Have you ever gone to a museum or a gallery and they said that you could not take flash photography? Well, that is the reason. Uh, your flash photography will make the painting fade faster. So that's why they kindly ask you to refrain from from aging the the painting but in my case me being an illustrator what i usually do is i scan my work one time and it becomes a digital file and then my my draw my painting my paper i store it away the best i can hopefully mold and weather and all that stuff will not destroy the paper but as far as works that you might have seen made in poster color is posters back in the day when there was a movie like the old Star Wars posters 
um, mo just general movie posters. Nowadays, they do that um, photoshopped photographs. They add some layers of color. It's uh, unappealing to me, to say the least. I think it's very, very ugly. Um, artist Paolo Rivera, which is an artist that I really admire, he did for one of the Captain America movies, he did like an old style movie poster using using gouache or acrylics, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, back in the day, you would be an artist with a lot of photos creating an artistic rendition of the poster. And all the cool movies from, I want to say, 80s and, and, and back, they had not... Um, photo edit posters but they had painting posters and another place that you might have seen gouache poster color gouache being used is if you ever seen an old animation be it a cartoon or an anime from the 90s and back the background used to be a full-on gouache painting and that's why I personally think that they look beautiful. Maybe it's a little bit of nostalgia, but um, <laughs> I do admire the medium and I do think that they look nice. There is also the work of James Bama that he did specifically. Now, if you go to the internet and look at James Bama, you're going to find a lot of his stuff. But it's specifically, he did the cover box of old 60s um, build kits for universal monsters and, and other monsters. So if you were a kid in the 60s, which is way before my time, but people would buy like those plastic models to, to, to paint of Dracula, King Kong, Godzilla, uh, witches, whatever, those Halloween stuff. And the box had um, a gouache painting. And I recommend you taking a look online. James Bummer, uh, I forget, oh, Aurora, that's the name, Aurora Kits. It was a company that made plastic kits for... For people to to buy and and pay and customize, uh, I find those very interesting. I don't have any, but the paintings that he did look amazing. And there is actually a crime that had been committed because the company later acquired uh, fluorescent plastic. So the idea is that they would sell like a Frankenstein, but the head would be fluorescent. So you'd paint the whole monster, leave the, the, the head without paint, and that plastic would be fluorescent and would create a nice effect. And what they did was, instead of paying him, James Bama, to create a new cover for this new product, or hire a different artist, they paid an artist to paint over James Bama gouache painting with acrylic to do the new covers. And they look horrible. It's one of those cases of trying to, um, not even trying to do anything, just, just straight up uh, destroying the, the work of another artist. That's a bit of a down note. Just in case you you do Google uh, James Bama gouache works for Aurora kits of Universal Monsters, uh, know that the fluorescent ones is just a hack job on top of his paintings. And um, they didn't like use a copy of his painting. He, they actually got the original gouache painting and they painted over. Anyway, or so I read in a blog post from C. Martin Croker, 
blog called Argo Bargain that was posted in 2006. So uh, maybe that's not true, but uh, apparently it is true. It was destroyed with some acrylic. Uh, some artist, the, the, the guy who did the evil act, the Batman villain caper type of, of cruelty. We don't know the name of the guy. Another thing is, if you play the video games from the 90s and 80s, sometimes the cover of the game was done in gouache. It's a little bit more difficult for me to say that most of them were made in gouache. I think a lot of them were also oil. There is some, some uh, early digital. People make fun of the Sega Master System covers because they look like clip art. <laughs> I kind of like them, but it's a whole other topic. But Super Nintendo and um, uh, Sega Mega Drive, which the Americans call the Genesis, they had some cool wash paintings for cover, especially in the Japanese covers. If you're a nerd like myself, you're probably quite aware that oftentimes Japanese game covers from retro games they had cooler uh, covers or at least just different and it's kind of hard to pick favorites but sometimes they they had a little bit more attention to detail or in the least more time to work on the cover some are on the same level I think that the game Demon's Crest, the Japanese cover, is on gouache. This is a speculation on my part. I could not find the name of the artist, uh, let alone um, confirm that the technique is gouache, but it seems to me like it's gouache. And the Western version, which also looks brilliant, is by the artist Julie Bell, which herself deserves a episode of her own and her paintings are in oil anyway uh, there are several examples of cool gouache work and it's a medium that is um, kind of neglected i think like a lot of books uh, the book that i mentioned in the last episode does not really go into detail on gouache gouache is kind of seen as an illustrator medium not as a not as a artist medium and yes there is a difference between illustration and art and illustrators are oftentimes not considered um, artists in the more academic and <laughs> pedantic circles of of the field but i, I love it anyways it was the stuff that i like doing most of course i love art but illustration is illustration kind of carries a certain legacy that fine art has forsaken. That is a very deep, 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 deep topic for maybe another time, but we cannot sleep on the work of guys that did illustration and in that I include comic books and nowadays obviously video games. Uh, I'm not a gamer myself. I do like retro video games but, the, but a lot of cool art and illustration is still living in the work of video games. So that is it for this transmission. I do apologize, I said I wouldn't dwell much on wash, and the whole transmission was all about wash. So I do apologize about that, I did not mean to trick you. Uh, please visit vinitawonderful.blogspot.com If you have a question or a suggestion for another transmission, it's heyvini at hotmail.com Send me an email please. So that is it for today. Thank you and goodbye.